first, let me thank uh, Ifad for uh, putting uh, this very uh, rich uh, two panels together. Um, and uh, uh, just like the president mentioned, this is time for coordinated action. Um, when uh, I set out that vision for the Ministry of International Cooperation, and as you uh, read, I, I joined this ministry uh, in December of 2019, so before uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the breakout of COVID in such a, a magnitude, uh, the idea was uh, through the Ministry of International Cooperation, we have a platform for both multilateral and bilateral partners to come together uh, where we push uh, the SDG agenda nationally and also uh, on the global scale. Uh, because uh, the, um, uh, the SDGs are supposed to be the common platform for all countries. It's the benchmark that we all uh, are able to understand. It's important for our public. It's important for uh, international institutions to mobilize uh, around uh, uh, common themes. Uh, so when the, uh, when the uh, COVID happened, uh, of course, uh, we did not want at all uh, to be derailed from uh, our main objectives. On the contrary, uh, this is actually uh, the correct time, and there's no better time to bring everyone together. Uh, international institutions today play a, a magnificent and important role, uh, not just on the financing side, but organizations which have specialization uh, of uh, certain sectors, just as we are discussing agriculture today, uh, is extremely important. To be able uh, to have all of us uh, together where different uh, country experiences are shared, uh, where different multilateral institutions provide technical assistance uh, and uh, uh, vision on how to move forward on different topics is extremely uh, timely. Uh, in the case uh, of Egypt, uh, the, the narrative that we uh, launched with our partners, both uh, multilateral and bilateral, was on April 2nd. Uh, and in the spirit of public-private partnership, our narrative is P and P and P, but that is people, projects, and purpose. And the idea is that uh, as we are uh, navigating uh, the implications of COVID in the short term, uh, we do not want to overlook uh, the overarching objectives of SDGs. On the contrary, we want to be able to push forward our agenda because everything we do, whether today or after, uh, hopefully uh, this uh, crisis uh, sails away, is going to be tailored to the people, uh, projects uh, uh, in action, and we actually have purpose as a driver. So that is just... Uh, the, the way we uh, create a framework of collaboration. When it comes to COVID and what the government has done, uh, we are very keen on the two curves, flattening the two curves, the curve that is related to the health, and the other one is the one related to uh, flattening the recession curve. Uh, with the health, there are several uh, 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 actions that the government has taken uh, early on uh, with collaboration with the WHO, following protocols, there was tracing and isolation, in-field hospitals, etc. When it comes to flattening the recession curve, monetary policy, fiscal policy, and structural reforms have been put together uh, in a way uh, that creates credibility and trust and confidence to the private sector, as you mentioned, which is extremely important, uh, because in a sector such as agriculture and, and uh, agriculture is important not just today at a national level, but the food security that uh, is important for the globe uh, necessitates that each national uh, uh, narrative and each national policy uh, adds up so that everybody at the end is, uh, uh, is protected. In the case of Egypt, uh, in the fiscal stimulus uh, that the uh, government uh, uh, came out with in response to COVID, there is uh, special uh, programs for the agriculture sector uh, the, uh, uh, when it comes to wheat, because we are a very uh, big importer of wheat, uh, there have been um, allocation of funds to the farmers in Egypt so that the production uh, in the local harvest is basically uh, taken care of in a proper manner. Uh, there has been digitalization of some of the elements with respect to information to the farmers. Sanitation has been taking place. Something else which is extremely important, we still export uh, in a fresh produce uh, to the region uh, and uh, to Europe and that has been very important for the Ministry of Agriculture and Land Reclamation when it comes to the health standards uh, to safeguard that what is exported is very important and this has been done in conjunction with the aviation sector because this, these products go actually uh, on commercial planes not just the cargo planes. So there has been a, a very uh, important concerted effort from the government side 
much more uh, needs to be done in terms of agriculture and uh, um, uh, food uh, uh, or food processing as an industry. And this is something which we are putting uh, very much uh, at, the, at, the fore, uh, at the fore of our discussions within government. Uh, the president uh, has announced uh, last week that there are more areas of land which will be allocated for more agricultural produce. And just uh, you know, to, to, to save time, I, I really want to commend uh, the uh, uh, points that were made by the president when he talks about uh, the importance of digital solutions, the importance of rural financing, uh, trying to ensure that access to markets and disruption uh, of supply chains are taken care of, and also the youth employment. So these are, these are all elements which are key for uh, each national government. And of course, um, uh, when it comes to uh, IF, uh, IFAD and others trying to put a stimulus package for the agriculture sector, we as governments are here uh, to uh, provide input uh, uh, when we are asked so that uh, these packages for the region, um, uh, particularly that we were the head of the African Union until uh, last month. So this regional integration is something that we care about tremendously. Africa, of course, has been singled out in the international community as a continent that needs to be taken care of because uh, 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 you know, after the uh, great uh, prospects, uh, this really comes as a cloud uh, that affects very, vul very many vulnerable groups. And therefore, uh, we, are, uh, we, would, we would like to work together with you, with other institutions, uh, uh, to be able to come up with a concerted view on how uh, we uh, help on the agriculture sector uh, in Africa. And just the final words that were also mentioned by Rola from ESQUA, that debt relief should also uh, be targeted to middle income countries, not only low income countries, to be able to create that fiscal space to help uh, uh, the vulnerable groups, particularly in the agriculture and food, uh, is something which uh, is extremely important. And Africa as a continent uh, is one that needs special attention. I will stop here for the, for the sake of time. Unfortunately, I have a cabinet meeting that I have to uh, also virtually uh, uh, join. Uh, so um, uh, I want to thank everyone who has listened. If there are any follow-up comments or questions, I would be uh, very happy to exchange with you as the moderator and then uh, uh, you, uh, you know, disseminate to everyone uh, in the panel. But thank you very much. Uh, and again, uh, this is time where all governments uh, show resolve uh, and the international community through multilateral and bilateral uh, uh, actions uh, and uh, co collaboration is the only way for all of us to get through this uh, at hopefully uh, a very uh, a very reasonable pace thank you very much